Mother, is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Have you heard of the wonderful one-horse shay that was built in such a logical way it ran a hundred years to a day? And then of a sudden it, ah, but stay, I'll tell you what happened without delay. Well, of course, it hasn't been a hundred years since the Andersons bought their car, but you get the general idea. In Springfield in the driveway beside the white frame house on Maple Street, the Anderson chariot is getting quite a going over, like this. I don't care what you say, Father. It is a wreck, and you know it. Is that so? For your information, Betty, they don't build cars like this anymore. They don't build covered wagons, either. What was that? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, nothing, Dad. Uh, I was just thinking. He said they didn't build covered wagons, either. Oh, he did, did he? Okay, Kathy, just you wait. But if you find the car so objectionable, we can arrange for you not to be annoyed with it any longer on Thursday nights. Oh, uh, I didn't mean that, Dad. I, I think it's fine. Well, I don't, and I don't even want to borrow it anymore. Good, I'll keep that in mind. Look at it. The paint all worn off, the upholstery all faded. You know, that's the trouble with you kids. You don't look beneath the surface. That's where your value is. Do you know there's 30% more metal in this car than in any 1950 model on the road? There is, huh? There certainly is. Now, you see this body panel? It's a little banged up, I admit that. But listen to it. That's solid. <laughs> That's good, honest metal. Dad. Cars today aren't built that way. None of them. They sound tinny and cheap. Dad. Have you seen the fenders they're putting on the new cars just like paper mache? Dad. But on this car? Well, listen to this. But grab it! Gosh, Dad, I was trying to tell you I don't know, why do things like this always happen to me? Daddy, why did you knock the fender off the car? Kathy, you'd better be quiet if you know what's good for you Jim, I'm ready to leave any time you are That's fine, Margaret, just fine But you'll find the basket with the lunch on the kitchen table, so why don't you... Jim, what on earth did you do to the car? I didn't do anything to the car, Margaret Daddy knocked the fender off. <laughs> I did no such thing. All I did was give it one or two little taps. Jim, Mr. Gilhausen said it wasn't going to last. Mr. Gilhausen, that crook, he doesn't know any more about fixing a car than... than Kathy does. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Charges me $7.80 to put a fender back on and doesn't even use a good grade of scotch tape. You want me to get the sandwiches, Mom? Well... Leave the sandwiches alone, bud. We can't go to a church picnic or any place else until we get the car fixed. We can put the fender on with wire, Dad. It didn't look too bad the last time. All right, go get the wire. I think there's a whole bunch of it in the garage. Mr. Gilhausen. A fine mechanic he turned out to be. Father. He's a butcher, that's what he is. Anybody who can't put a fender on so it stays put. Father, may I please have the tickets for the picnic? You certainly may not. But, Father, Mr. Liggett said I could ride with them. Oh, he did, did he? And we'll be there hours before You're you. You're going with us or you aren't going at all? But, Father... Hurry up, bud. I can't. Kathy got the wire all tangled up. Oh, I did not. <laughs> There's a roll on top of the workbench, bud. Bring that. Okay. Father, I certainly think... Betty, you're going in our car or you aren't going. Now, that's fine. Oh, poo. Jim. <laughs> Don't you think you're being a little severe? Betty wants to spend more time with Janie Liggett, that's all. It isn't that she's ashamed to be seen in our car, is it, Betty? It certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> that old heat. Now you see, Margaret, she's ashamed of us. She's too good to ride in our car. I'm not too good, but that isn't even a car. 
Just a bunch of old bolts held together with bobby pins. Here's the wire, Dad. Betty, that car is good enough for me. And if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for my family. Is that clear? Here's the wire, Dad. And anytime you think that you're better than the rest of us, well, we'll just do something about it. And let's not forget it. Here's the wire, Dad. I heard you, bud. Gosh, how did I know? Sounds like your needle was stuck. <laughs> Here's the wire, Dad. Here's the wire, Dad. Daddy! Kathy, be quiet. Tea whiz. Bud, I'll hold the fender in place and you wire it together. Okay, Dad. Jim, I, I know what Betty had in mind. She was only thinking of our good. Weren't you, Betty? Hmm? Oh, sure. They're going to have a drawing for a new car and... If someone isn't there... Someone will be there, Margaret. We'll all be there. Not that we'd ever be lucky enough to win a new car. Hold the front up a little higher, Dad. How's that? Okay. I've been going to church picnics since I was four years old, and the only people who ever win new cars are old ladies of 90 who wouldn't be caught dead with anything but a horse and buggy. <laughs> Father, if they pick our number and we aren't there... We'll be there. Now stop worrying about it. How's it going, bud? I think it's almost finished. Betty, go in and get the lunch. All right, Father. And lock the door on the way out. Yes, Father. I think that's as good as I can do, Dad. Hmm. Well, it seems firm enough. I wouldn't lean on it too hard. It's all rusted away on the inside. Well, it'll certainly last until we get home. And believe me, I'll give that Gilhausen character a piece of my mind tomorrow morning. Hurry up, Betty. We're ready to leave. Be right there. I'll get the motor warmed up while we're waiting. Want me to do it, Dad? No, I'm perfectly capable of starting my own car. <laughs> now what's gotten into this miserable wreck? Bang on the dashboard, Dad. Sometimes that does it. I did bang on the dashboard. Just cold, that's all. Is this all of it, Mother? Yes, dear, thank you. No good. Jim? Bud, uh... Jump up and down on the bumper a few times. Okay. What's wrong with the car? It won't start again. Be quiet, Kathy, please. Well, it won't, will it? Try it now, Dad. Bud? Yes, Dad? Uh, jiggle the wire on the distributor. Okay. I never saw it to fail. The car runs like a dream, except when you need it. Oh, Mother, there's Janie Liggett. What am I going to tell them? Well, you just have to tell them... Betty? If... Yes, Father? What time is the drawing for the new car? I don't know, Father, but if we aren't there... Don't worry, we'll be there, but uh, just in case it takes us a while to get started... Well, uh, here. You take the tickets and go ahead with the Liggetts. Oh, Father! If we should happen to win the car, you... Uh, well, go ahead. We'll meet you out there. I'm coming! Goodbye, everybody. See you later. Betty, be careful, Betty. Daddy. Yes, Kathy? I don't mind riding in your car. Thank you, Kathy. I'm brave. <laughs> hey, Dad. What is it, bud? There's a pencil stuck in the distributor. I know, that's to keep the wire in. Well, the pencil's in, but the wire's out. <laughs> bud, fix it. That's why it won't start. Okay. I knew it wasn't anything important, just a loose wire, that's all. It's all set, Dad. Okay. Stand back, I'll try it again. Yeah, see? All right, everybody, let's go. Put the hood down, bud. Okay. Let it down easy so it won't shake the pencil loose. Uh, okay, Dad. <laughs> Come on, Margaret, what are you and Kathy waiting for? Daddy. What is it, Kathy? We've got a flat tire. Oh, no. <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. There must be some way of keeping that fender on. We'll be there in a minute, dear, and then you can fix it properly. What do you mean, properly? How can you fix a fender properly with those silly hunks of wire? It isn't a wire that's breaking, Dad. Pieces are coming out of the fender. <laughs> it only fell off three times. I know how many times it fell off. I know what's the matter with it. I don't know how to fix it, that's all. 
Daddy, there's the picnic. Where? Right over there. Dad, look out. What? There's a bum. <laughs> there it goes again. That makes four times. <laughs> oh. Jim? Fiddlesticks. Kathy, why don't you run ahead and find Betty? Okay, Mommy. I'll see if anybody knows who won the car. Come on, bud. Let's take another whack at it. I don't think it's going to do much good, Dad. Look at the holes in it. Idiotic-looking contraption. Dad, I think I know how we can do it. If we can get some long pieces of wire, we can... No, that won't work. What won't work? I thought we could run the wire under the car and over the hood and tie it on that way. <laughs> Bud, that won't work. Well, that's what I said. No good fender. Daddy, no Daddy, good moth-eaten, lopsided, pot-bellied... Daddy, Kathy, Daddy, what is it? Daddy, we won! We what? Yeah! Jim! Kathy, are, are you sure? I just saw Daddy, and they called our number, and we won! Jim, how wonderful! Well, Bud... Boy, oh boy! Bud, would you care to join me? What are you gonna do, Dad? I'm going to show this no-good, misguided fender just where it gets off. And that's right here. Turn it over, bud. Like that? That's it. Now, watch. I guess that'll show it. Can I jump on it too, Daddy? Sure, go right ahead. You too, bud. Have a good time. We got a new car. We got a new Jim, isn't it wonderful? It certainly is. I wonder what color it is. If that isn't just like a woman. I suppose if you don't like the color, we'll have to give it back. Oh, no, but I just thought it... Father, might... isn't it wonderful? Isn't it simply lush? It certainly is. Where is it? Father, what are they doing? Never mind them. Where is it? But, Father, they're ruining the fender. Who cares about an old fender? We want a new car, didn't we? Oh, Father, no. We want a ham. <laughs> Well, it's not the first time folks have expected one thing and ended up with a lot less. It just points up a fact we've learned, you and I, many times. You've got to make sure of what you get in everything. In a pound of coffee, for instance, you want to make sure of the flavor you get. You want the most in flavor for every penny you spend. To millions of folks, that means getting the one coffee famous for flavor above all others, our Maxwell House coffee. Mmm, mm, that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. You won't find it, you know, in any other coffee. No coffee but Maxwell House. And there's a mighty good reason why. It's our recipe, and there's no mistaking its importance. It's the one and only recipe of its kind. It calls for certain fine varieties of coffee, and our Maxwell House people carefully combine them just so. It's the one way, the one recipe for that good-to-the-last-drop flavor. And it spells the big difference between just any coffee and coffee at its Sunday go-to-meeting best. And this difference adds up to more enjoyment, more flavor for your money when you pour Maxwell House coffee into those cups on your table. So next time, bring home that familiar blue tin of Maxwell House. Enjoy coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> You know, for some reason or other, automobile people are a cheerful lot. The smiling Irishman, the laughing Lithuanian, they're a gay group of fellows with lilting hearts and names to match. In Springfield, it's Fred Haney, the happy Hibernian. And that's where the Andersons are headed, like this. Father. What is it, Betty? Don't you think it's about time we gave up on this old heap? Betty, please don't annoy your father. Well, jumping creepers. It's all right, Margaret. I'm used to being ridiculed. After all, I'm only her father. Everybody has to get so personal about everything. Why is it such an insult if I think we need a new car? Betty, this is more than a car. 
This is an old friend which has served us faithfully and well. And you don't give up an old friend just because it's a little droopy in the fenders. You treat it gently, humor it, restore it to health. The best thing you can do for this friend is give it a decent funeral. Betty! <laughs> for your information, Betty, this car will be as good as new in less than a week. And it'll be good for another 12 years. Holy cow. <laughs> Golly, the car's even older than I am. It makes more noise, too. Father. What is it, Betty? As long as you insist on having the car fixed up, can we please have it painted? I fully intend to have it painted. A new fender, a new paint job, a few little touches on the motor here and there. We'll have a car you can be proud of. Can we have it painted blue, please? What's the matter with black? But it's always been black, and black is so dark. Well, we'll get a light black. <laughs> I like red. Then you can pretend you're riding in a fire engine. <laughs> You know, Margaret, I should have had this done a long time ago. I had the car fixed up, I mean. When I think of the way I've let it get run down, well, <laughs> I should have had my head examined. That's what we've been telling you. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, uh, green's a nice color. <laughs> Is it? Well, if you like green. <laughs> You know, for a while, I thought maybe we'd get a new car. Golly! But then I said, why? Oh. I can have this one fixed up for 50 or $60, so why go to all that unnecessary expense? Uh, did anybody say they'd fix it up for 50 or $60? No, but I'm just figuring conservatively. Maybe it'll only be $40. What a dreamer. But. <laughs> I don't know. When I was a boy, children showed a little respect for their parents. They didn't spend half their life... Jim. What is it, Margaret? Isn't that Haney's? I know it's Haney's. I've only been here a million times. Where was I, bud? They didn't spend half their life. <laughs> uh, they didn't spend half their life trying to make up wisecracks about their fathers. Now, behave yourself. Okay, Dad. Father. I know, Betty. You want it painted blue. Well, I just thought... You want blue. Kathy wants red. Bud wants green. How would it be if we settled for a nice scotch plaid? <laughs> well, hello, Jim. Got the whole family with you this time, huh? Oh, well, that's right. Say, Fred, I'd like to see if we can't... We want it painted red. Kathy. And make the horn louder. <laughs> Kathy, get back in the car and sit down. Yes, Daddy. Fred. Father, look! What? That yellow one, isn't it a dream boat? Betty, I'm trying to tell Mr. Haney... Boy, look at that foreign job. Is that something? Margaret. Dear, I know you and Mr. Haney want to talk, so why don't the children and I just wander around and look at the different cars? An excellent idea, Mrs. Anderson. Excellent. Oh, Bud, look at that one. It's got a motorcycle on it. That's for deliveries, dopey. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, have you ever seen anything like that blue one? It's very nice, dear. Well, maybe now we can talk. Don't tell me you're finally going to give up on that wreck. What wreck? <laughs> Just because it looks a little shabby. Why don't you face it, Jim? You'll need a new car. Fred, I'm not spending any $1,600 for a car. Sixteen sixty-three twenty. Pardon me. <laughs> Including license and tax. I'll take 12 Jim, I've known you for a long time. I value your business. But more than that, I value your friendship. Then tell Gilhausen to fix my car so it'll stay together. He can't, Jim. It's old. It's worn out. You're just throwing good money after bad. Will you please buy a new car? You don't have to buy it from me. Buy it from anybody, but buy it. Are you all finished? Yes. No. <laughs> just tell Gilhausen to fix my car right this time. Of all the stub... Gilhausen. I'm over here, Fred. Come here, will you? Ben Hur is back. Very funny. Holy smoke, Mr. Anderson. I don't have to work on that thing again, do I? No, you don't have to. I know a lot of places that'll be very glad. Uh, just a minute, Jim. Don't get up on your high horse. If you want it fixed, we'll fix it. Won't we, Gil? We'll fix it or we'll give it either a transfusion. <laughs> Why anybody would want to throw good money into that wreck? Gil? So we fix it. Where's the fender? It got stepped on. It what? 
It's gone. It fell off. Because you don't know how to put a fender on. I put fenders on before you was born. But not fenders like your fenders. All right. I... All right, Gil. We'll just have to put on a new fender. Okay, Jim? Well, I suppose so. And while we're at it, let's do it upright. Let's paint the whole thing. Get the motor tuned up. Fix the lights. Have you got all that, Gil? This time, we're going to fix it right. Well, that's more like it. So, we start with the fender. Look, you see this big hole in the panel? Yes. That's where I got to bolt the fender. On a hole. <laughs> so, we need a new panel. A uh, new panel. Go ahead, Gil. I'm writing it down. Wait a minute. Why can't you just the fix new the... new panel bolts onto the body, only it's all rusted away over here and it won't hold. So, we need a new body. <laughs> Look, Fred, all I want frame you to do... Frame won't take a new body. It's too light. New frame, chassis, rear assembly, transmission. You got it? I got it. New crankshaft, flywheel, feed line... Mr. Gilhouse. Connecting rods, clutch, camshaft... Mr. Gilhouse. New springs, muffler, exhaust, shocks, bumpers... Mr. Gilhouse. Horn's all right. <laughs> Mr. Gilhouse, forget about the whole thing, will you? Just fix the wire in the distributor and I'll be happy. Mr. Anderson, look. Lift the hood, will you, Fred? Okay. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> now, you see that wire, Mr. Anderson? It goes down there and hooks onto that. But it can't because it's loose. Hey, you see this? You got a cracked block, the water pump's broke, the radiator leaks, the piston assembly's shot, the valves are gone. You gotta get a new motor. <laughs> Just because you can't hook up one little wire, huh? What am I gonna hook it on? <laughs> Jim. We're trying to help you, and with a job this big, we'll give you a special rate. Well, that's more like it. Uh, what does it come to? Uh, the whole thing? With a paint job. You want me any more, Fred? Uh, no, thanks a lot, Gil. Okay. See you later, Mr. Anderson. You bet. <laughs> Go ahead, Fred. Figure it up. And uh, sharpen your pencil. Well, uh, let me see. 1538 to 47, 496... 496? Uh, the whole thing, including labor and parts, comes to exactly $1,678. 60? <laughs> That's $15 more than a new one. Uh, Jim, this is all on a piecework basis. And besides, with seat covers, you'll have a car that's practically new. 1600 Margaret? Well, I told you in the very beginning, Jim. Margaret! Jim, is anything wrong? $1,600 to, to... It's an outrage. <laughs> That's what it is, an outrage. Well, you think it over, Jim, and whatever you decide, just let me know. $1,678. That's the most outrageous thing I've ever heard in my life. What did he say, Dad? Is it going to be blue, Father? Daddy, the man let me shoot the grease gun. All right, get in. We're going home. <laughs> Aren't you going to have it fixed? I said get in. I want to stay and shoot the grease gun. <laughs> All right, children, let's not argue. Do as your father says. I'll get another mechanic. That's what I'll do. Haney isn't the only dealer in Springfield. Tell me my car isn't any good. $1,678. Dear, don't you think if you talk to Mr. Haney again... Haney? He's a worse crook than Gilhausen ever was. <laughs> <laughs> He's ten times as bad. Somebody will fix this car and it'll be good for another 12 years. And another 140,000 miles. Oh, Father. Have you heard of the wonderful one-horse shay that was built in such a logical way it ran 100 years to a day? Well, we're sitting in it right now. A hundred years? Holy cow, Dad. This car's as sound as it was the day we bought it. It's a good car, solid and sturdy. I'll put on a fender, get a little paint, a few tires. <laughs> what was that? Another fender fell off. Well, we'll put it back on. <laughs> what was that? Another fender fell off. Well, we'll put it back on. Dad. <laughs> Father! <laughs> Jim, we've 
just got to get a new car. <laughs> Fred. Fred. Oh, Fred. You see, of course, if you're not a dunce, how it went to pieces all at once. All at once and nothing first, just as bubbles do when they burst. End of the wonderful one-horse shade. Logic is logic. That's all I say. Yes, logic is logic. And when it comes to coffee, that's the reason you naturally look for the most in flavor for every penny you spend. And it's yours in the coffee with the world's most famous flavor, our good-to-the-last-drop Maxwell House. That wonderful flavor begins with our Maxwell House recipe, but we don't stop there. We know that air can steal coffee flavor, and ordinary containers like paper bags can't prevent roasted coffee from losing flavor, whether it's ground or whole bean. That's why we carefully vacuum-pack our Maxwell House in the familiar blue tin. It's the only way you can be guaranteed coffee fresh as the hour it was roasted without one bit of flavor wasted. So these days, be sure you get the most in value in flavor and freshness. You always will when you open up a pound of Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Robert Young. Since the beginning of this year, as you probably know, we on Father Knows Best have been working hand in glove with the Inter-Industry Highway Safety Committee. Our particular phase of the overall problem was the enlistment of teenagers and their parents in a good driver's club. And now, after five months of campaigning, we'd like to make our first report. And for all those connected with this safety movement, we have news I consider little short of miraculous. Since the inception of this campaign, two and three-quarter million pledges have been requested by the teenage drivers of America. Think of it, two and three-quarter million. In large cities, in small hamlets, the young men and women of this country have proved beyond a shadow of a doubt the basic integrity of their generation. We are proud of them, prouder than we can say. By recognizing their common problem, by driving safely and carefully, these young men and women have brought added security to the highways and everlasting glory to themselves. We congratulate them on a job well done and ask only that they continue their good work in the future. Good night. Now yours to enjoy an instant coffee you'll love for breakfast every morning. An instant coffee you'll be proud to serve to your dinner guests. It's Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Here's the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. Tomorrow, try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Instantly good to the last drop. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned for Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Stay tuned for Screen Guild Theater, next on NBC.